Okay, so I don't want to entirely do this channel on VR, so I mean, we're going to do other games as well. Firstly, this game. Not sure what it is about. Maybe a fox. I haven't looked at anything. It was gifted to me by one of my friends, so let's see how well it is. Oh, I can move camera. Oh, there we go. Oh, Are you fox. awake? I thought I heard you get up. Yeah, Controller. I'm awake. Sorry, like... I just can't sleep. Are you thinking about about him? Yeah, a bit. You should get back to sleep, my love. I'm fine. No, no, it's okay. What else is on your mind? <sighs> I don't know. It seems weird, but I had one of the most vivid dreams of my life. Wait, I'm this way? I saw a fox on a snowy mountain, just looking confused and worried. Those eyes. Oh, double jump. I can't get those eyes out of my head. She was running in the windy snow, looking for something. Do you think it has to do with, with you and what's been going on? I don't know. It was just a dream, Rachel. They're not meant to make sense. A lot's happened the past couple days, that's all. Well, if you're not going to sleep anyway, you should tell me. I want to hear. All right. So, not far from her home, she followed oh. that path to something unexpected. Oh, that's sad. Did I do anything? Didn't look like it. Okay. She couldn't stay, though. She had to find her other two children, so she took that path. She followed it towards something ancient, something with answers. for any sign of her cubs. Points of light showed the way to this ancient tree. It was as if each one had a story to tell all their own. The land was trying to tell my story too. I felt like I was right behind her the whole time.
Usually those kids would leave me alone, but somehow they could tell I was different. They made fun of how far away I lived. They called my dad a sourdough. I was a blabbermouth as a kid, telling my dad stories I made up for hours. But after that show and tell, I didn't tell him much anymore. He didn't know exactly what was wrong, but his best guess was that the toys he carved weren't cool enough. He carved me a tank and tried to tell me what it was like to be in a real tank as a serviceman. I didn't know your dad was in the military. Yeah, in the army. The sad thing is that I would pretty much forgotten until just now. There's so much I still don't know about him. I'm sorry. He knows how much you love him. You're going to see him again soon and have some closure, I'm sure. myself, why talk to anybody anyway? Why bother when I'm happy by myself? I started drawing a lot, mostly animals I saw in the woods by my home. I then imagined designing my own hideouts with things like TVs and pantries full of chips and cookies. I think that idea of leaving home and drawing blueprints started my career. I found a lot of solace in that. I'm not surprised, but I did the same thing, you know? There's something special about having a place to call your own. And now look at us. Well, if you count renting in an overpriced city. <laughs> it's as close as we can get for now.
Oh, the scenery changed. Wait, can I go back? Oh, I see. We're just in a completely different area. There's nothing this way. Okay. This is our last thing game. Well, I'm not, not going to be talking much at this. Destroy the scenery and music, I guess, you know? My teenage years were full of sketching, angst, and trouble. I wasn't popular or unpopular. Maybe just forgettable. I guess that gave me a sense of freedom. So I hung out with crazy kids, doing crazy things, even though I mostly just watched the chaos ensue. We did it all. Put fireworks in mailboxes, hide roadkill in people's garages, break windows of the barber shop in Anchorage. My dad was furious, but he was so busy working he couldn't do much to stop me from going out. I think being an adult means there's no one to stop you making hard decisions. He had to make a living, and he couldn't be in two places at once. Yeah, I realize that now. But at the time, I was sure he was more interested in growing his business than what was going on with me. ability. Oh, we're in some like trail. Otter Lake. A river or a road? That's a road. Okay. Police station. Huh. Police station is a police car. He was working another late night, and my friends were over, saying how bored they were and how they'd come all the way out to my house for nothing. One of them mentioned how that old, ugly beyond belief truck was still in the garage, and how we should take it for a spin. I was only 15, so I kind of fought it for a while. The next thing I knew, we were careening around the mountain path, rocks spitting onto the sides of the cliff, while my dad's cringeworthy bluegrass blared out the speakers. I drove while my friends were in the back of that yellow and purple truck, throwing beer bottles and trash at anything remotely interesting. I felt like I was soaring in the air with borrowed wings. But all good things have endings. A cop outside of Eagle River pulled us over after he saw us in a bottle rocket into someone's yard. What followed was a long night of talking to disappointed adults and feeling smaller than ever. Guess I can't get up here? Yes, at least. I need the butterfly thing. So it's telling me. But where are the butterflies? Those are over here. Oh, they're right here. Okay. I 
I see another one over here. You watch, I probably did. Oh, okay. I just realized something. I think I'm going out of bounds. Yeah, I am. Then there's something back over this way I need to go to. I think I was just at the area where the butterfly thing was. I was like, huh, let's go look over here where other stuff is. Hmm. As sure as I hit this rock. Goodbye area. Is there anything up here? Aha! No, oh, I can't get up there. Okay. Oh. This way it is. Where do I want to go? I'll look over here first. Was that the wood, the truck he was talking about? I hope those aren't important. I'm just going to ignore that one acting like it's not there.
After he drove me home from the police station, I blew up at him, saying how I never wanted to be like him, how I was going to be someone and leave that hick icebox for good. He just looked forward at the road with tired eyes. I took out that bluegrass tape from the cassette deck and chucked it out the window. In my sage teenage wisdom, I thought I had proved the ultimate point. But my dad had a different idea. He slammed the brakes, slowly bowed his head while gripping the steering wheel, and finally looked at me. All he said, like it was a polite request, was, make this right. I sat there in silence, fuming. Hold on, I should, uh... eventually got out and combed every square inch of the woods, muttering profanity after profanity. I found it 30 minutes later, near a small waterfall off the road. I went back to the truck, put the wet tape back in, and sure enough it worked. We didn't speak another word to each other the rest of the night. Wow, I knew you were a crazy teenager, but... It's hard to believe, isn't it? It surprises me too. It's like I didn't really know who that kid was back then. I bet my dad thought the same thing over and over. It's almost like he was saying, act this right to himself more than to me. I messed that up. Am I supposed to jump across there? There's nothing to jump across to. I don't know. Where do I go this way? Where do I get the butterflies from over there and come over here and get it? Oh, I need three. Oh my. Oh. I know where two are. One, there's two. Oh, I see. I get this one first. Okay. This one I kind of have to jump to get to. Okay.
There's all three. My friends would laugh about that night and talk about how crazy it was. And I laughed along, pretending it didn't bother me. But it did. I imagined my friends growing old in the bush, unable to find that thrill in those godforsaken ice fields. It's like those mountains were a literal wall, keeping me from leaving, where all I would have to look forward to are lumber yards and evening beers. I had to climb over. That was my only goal for a long time. If there was some way I could take my love of drawing and turn it into a way of escape, nothing would make me happier. I wanted to create instead of tearing trees down. I wanted to move to the lower 48, not because I hated it there in Alaska, but I hated the idea of it. It's like all of that spite inside me had created this monster which followed me around my whole teenage years. I put so much energy into doing what others didn't expect of me. Why did I do that? There's one fact you're forgetting, though. If you didn't have that fire in you, we probably would have never met. You're absolutely right. Maybe the destination is all that matters in the end. Hey, hold on. Then why am I awake? Why am I seeing this or? fox go on her journey? And why can't I stop thinking about my dad? I was closer to that one, now I'm closer to this one. Hey. I wonder if these are anything though. Oh, I see. Well. The case progress of I'm gonna leave episode one here. Thanks for watching. Is where the fuck are you? Are we starting to decide? No, it just looks like it. Where the camera moves. In the shadows. Yeah, it just looks like it with the shadows. But anyway, I see all of you. Thanks for coming. Bye.